We're going to be looking at implicit tangent lines today. We already learned how to implicitly differentiate. Let's go ahead and figure out how to apply that to figure out tangent line equations of implicit functions. So here we have y cosine of y plus t plus t squared equals t cubed. We know this is going to be implicit because within the function we have a mixture of y's and t's. So this is a function that uh, is... Um, a mixture of two variables, and when that happens and we differentiate, we have to use implicit differentiation. So what is the equation for the tangent line at uh, the point 0, comma, 5 pi over 2? So it's important to know that um, you have to have a point on an implicit function before you can find the slope of the, uh, the equation for the tangent line. Now, if they just gave you um, the x value, you could actually still, s sometimes you could solve for the y value, uh, depending on the implicit function, but I think in this case, there are actually two different y values at zero, and so that's why we have to know a specific point. Implicit functions, well actually they're not functions, right? A lot of times they're relations, and there's more than one point at the same x value. So, we want to find an equation for the tangent line, and when we're done with this, I will show you what the graph looks like. Actually, here is the graph. Let's go ahead and take a look at it so we can uh, kind of understand what we're doing here. Okay, here's the point at 0, comma, 5 pi over 2. You can see that there are multiple y values at x equals 0. And so we want to we find the equation for this line. This is a strange-looking graph. And in order to find the slope of this line, we have to take the derivative, right? And so it's very similar to tangent lines we figured out before, although it's implicit. So step one is to implicitly differentiate. So let's go ahead and get right to that. That's what we did previously. We're going to take ddt of this entire equation. Um, now you might be thinking, why not d dy? Well, t is t nine times out of ten is going to be well more than that. T is an independent variable, okay? Time usually, and then y is your dependent variable. You could do it the other way around. Um, you get a you get a weird graph, right? Like if, if y was on the x-axis and he was up here. But anyway, it's just standard to do it that way. Uh, we're going to use the um, we're just going to say that in general. Um, one second. Okay, we're going to use the product rule here. We're going to label y f and cosine of y plus t plus t squared g. So it would be f prime g plus fg prime. However, within g, which will be right here, and let's go ahead and label this so you can see. This is going to be g, and this is going to be f, just the y. But you can see that within g, we're going to have um, the chain rule, okay? So it's a product rule and a chain rule. Over here on the right, since it's ddt, it's just going to be 3t squared. Nothing major there. Okay, so to figure out product rule, we have to figure out f prime first. Um, well, if f is y and we take ddt of that, it will just be dy dt. In fact, it'd be 1 times dy dt, which is just dy dt. g, since it's cosine of y plus t plus t squared, we're going to have to use combination of implicit and the chain rule. So it'll be the derivative of the outside, which would be negative sine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine y plus t plus t squared. Then we want to take the derivative of the inside, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of y is uh, d dt of y is dy dt. d dt of t is 1. And the derivative of t squared is 2t. Okay. So now that we've done f prime g, f g prime, here's our f, here's our g, we can use product rule and just plug all that stuff in that we just figured out. Um, so it will be, why is that not, not here a little bit, it's in the and there we go. Okay. So it will be um, f prime g, in fact I should label this so you know what's going on here. So here's f prime, here's g plus f, and then what we just figured out, which is g prime. Over this time. There we go. So all of this right here is g prime. 
what we just figured out. And that's equal to the derivative of um, t cubed, which is 3t squared. All right, so now we're going to do step two, which is plug in the point that they gave us. Because, okay, so think about what, you know, when you find the slope of the tangent line, you take the derivative, right? And with implicit, you actually have to plug in a point. Now, the reason you don't have to do that with the original func like a normal function like a, that's not implicit, because if you plug in an x value, you know you're going to get one y value back. With implicit, you might get more than two y values back. And plus, your derivative equation is going to have a mixture of x's and y's or t's and y's. But anyway, we, we know that the derivative means um, the derivative and tangent line go hand in hand. Like if you plug in a point uh, in the derivative, it'll give you the slope of that graph. So that's just a reminder. I used to actually have my students get dy dt by itself or whatever, but you don't have to actually. Um, and a lot of times you'll save yourself some time by not doing that. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're going through here. Uh, you don't always have to get it by itself. Um, in fact, I never would because usually, like I said, it will save you some time from having to get dy dt by itself. And you're going to see why. So notice the point they gave us was 0, uh, comma 5 pi, 5 pi over 2. So wherever there's a um, y, I'm going to be replacing with 5 pi over 2. Wherever there's a t, in this case, it's, that is our independent variable. Which we're going to plug in 0. That's all we're doing for this step. Um, you know, this is going to become zero. This is going to become zero. A lot of the stuff's going to become zero, and that's why you don't have to get dy dt by itself or dy dx or whatever. So this will all simplify down to lead us to step three, which is to determine the derivative when you plug that point in, which will give us the slip of the tangent line. So now let's talk about this stuff. This is going back to unit circle. Cosine of 5 pi over 2 is actually going to be 0. It's the same as pi over 2, and the x value is 0 in the unit circle. Uh, sine of 5 pi over 2 uh, is actually the same as, as, pi, as uh, pi over 2. Okay, you've actually gone the same distance around uh, the circle. So it's just going to be 1. And then everything else uh, kind of just stays the same. All right, let's move on down here. So this will become 0 over here. And we'll have negative 5 pi over 2 times dy over dt plus 1 equals 0. Now we can get dy dt by itself, and you can kind of see why. I mean, it would have been crazy to try to get it by itself before we plugged in 0. This 0 really eliminated a lot of terms that we would have had to have move, moved. So now we can divide both sides by a negative 5 pi over 2, and this is 0, so it'll stay 0. We get dy, d, dy dt plus 1 equals 0, dy dt equals negative 1. And this will indeed, that will give us the slope, the m value of our tangent line. If we want to write it in y equals mx plus b form, of course we need to find the y-intercept of that line. All right, let's go ahead and go to that step, which is to, to determine the y-intercept. Um, so we know that the point on our line is 0, 5 pi over 2, so that's x is 0, y is 5 pi over 2, and we already know the slope. We plug that in and figure out real quickly that the y-intercept is 5 pi over 2, and it makes sense. If that's the point they gave us, 0, 5 pi over 2, since the x-value is 0, that is the y-intercept. So we're just going to plug in the slope and simplify, and our final equation is whoops, uh, negative x plus 5 pi over 2. And uh, you can see that with uh, the graph, all right? And I like looking at the graph always at the end because it gives us some context of what we've just found. That's the equation for this line on this implicitly defined function at 0, 5 pi over 2. You can kind of see, though, that any of these other points, if the y value was different but the x value was the same, it looks like it would have the same slope, just a different y-intercept.
All right, I believe that's it for this example. Yep, next we will take a look at example two.